So we're here with David Montgomery, a fantastic photographer, I'm a big, big fan. And nice to meet you, David. You too. How are things? Good, good, yeah. So where did you originally start? Well, I started as a, I was an assistant in New York and it was all buzzing, buzzing. And there were people like Robert Frank and um, Gary Winograd and Diane Arbus and all those people, they were just around. So they were my idols. And I was working for a commercial photographer called Lester Bookbinder, who was unbelievable. Lester was so good, he never really had to take a picture because he could see. It wasn't tough. I mean, he was tough, a very demanding person. And when I first started working for him, he said to me, look, you're like, um, to me, you're like a screwdriver is to a carpenter. And when the screwdriver gets bent, I get another one. Okay. So, uh... Did you get bent? Never. Never. <laughs> I made one mistake once. This is how great the guy was. We went out to Long Island to do a still life on the beach. And we were shooting it on an 8x10 camera. So, you know, the lens goes into a lens board that goes into the camera. Yeah. And we get out there on the beach, and I get out the lens and I get the camera. I forgot the lens board. And it, we're out on Montauk. And I have to say to the guy, <laughs> I forgot the lens board. He looked at me like he would turn me into a frog, right? <laughs> I just, he looked at me and he says, give me the box that the lens comes in. Big, Kodak 10 inch blah blah. He says, and give me the Stanley knife. And he cut a lens board and he cut the hole. You know, it had to be perfectly. Perfect. He made it so good that we actually kept using it. <laughs> and uh, I, I kept working for him thinking, how are you going, how would I ever learn all of this stuff? Right. And then one day he said, it's time for you to think about maybe work for a fashion photographer or do something else. And then I, leaving out a lot, I came to England. And um, it wasn't until I came to England that I got commissioned to do like Jimi Hendrix and uh, The Who and all those kind of people. Lester came to London and he said to me, look, I'm coming here because if I open a studio, a new studio in New York because the building came down that he was in, I'm going to go into debt and I'll never leave New York again. So <coughs> we traveled around and then I met somebody and got married here. So just, it was the way it was. Mm -hmm. I had to get to do something. I had a Pentax and I went up to Queen Magazine with some of my little reportage pictures. They gave me um, a broom cupboard and I set up my own dark room in the basement. And uh, the thing was, if I took a picture, it was printed two weeks later. If it was laid out bad, or if my reproduction was bad, or I didn't leave enough room for the type, I soon learned about it. Now the other guys that were working for Vogue, the big shots, they didn't see their work for three months. By that time, I'd had so many issues out that I was learning. I'm not saying I was good or bad, but even if I had not such a great picture, I'd print the shit out of it, and it would look good to most people. And uh, that was my strength. So it was like a learning curve. Yeah, really great. So you were hanging out with all of those photographers in the 60s? I wasn't hanging. I wasn't. Because when I got here, there was Terry, Bailey, and Duffy. And that was it. That was the mafia. They had everything. And I had to wait till one of those guys was sick or out of town to do a reshoot. <laughs> and that's how it started. The Sunday Times was a very special place. And David King was like the, the special master. guy up there, although Michael Rand was the godfather. And David kind of, they all did what they wanted to do. It was kind of run by the art department. So King calls me up and says, um, listen, I want to do a story. I got an album to do the Who Sell Out. 
here's my idea. I said, great, he produced everything, they came down. I mean, I just lit it and executed it. But you executed it very well. Yeah, but you know, when you're a commercial photographer, yeah, you know, you just you do it. And the same with Hendrix, that was a blast. I mean, I set up a f wall of flames behind him with a can of petrol. Was, the fact I didn't fry the guy alive, <laughs> he never moved. And uh, we just used to do these things. 75 pounds a shot, I was rolling. And what, um, um, whose idea was Electric Ladyland then? Um? The nude picture was David King. So King said, okay, I want 25 nude girls. So they got these girls from nightclubs. They just sent these guys out and all these girls came down. I mean, it was innocent. Anyway, the girls come in, into the studio. Okay, girls, over here. They strip off what they got their knickers on. I'm more worried about lighting it. And uh, they come in, they're all shapes and sizes. And uh, I do a Polaroid and I show it to the art director and they look at it and they say, uh, doesn't look good with the knickers on. <laughs> so he sa they say to the girls, can you take your knickers off? They say, no. So they say, uh, okay, three pounds each to take your knickers off. They say, no. And some girl says, five. So they say, okay, five. Whoosh. So all the knickers come flying off. <laughs> I mean, it was like whoosh on the side of the set. 